Liberal Dan Radio presents Fat Man Rants. MSNBC had uh, uh, interviewed had interviewed several Michigan voters. I think in Dearborn, Michigan, and and most of the people at this table uh, that that I'll, that I'll bring up in a second, it'll be up here in a second, uh, were people who are Muslim. Not everybody, I don't think. I think one of them was not. I'm assuming, um, and and they were talking about how they are unlikely to vote for Joe Biden, and be, being that it's Michigan, Michigan's an important state because it's a state that Hillary didn't win, it's a state that Biden did win, and so therefore people saying that they're not going to vote for Biden makes it more likely that Trump's going to win, which is a problem. Um, and and I have a I, I sometimes will hesitate being judgmental on people who are from oppressed cultures because when on the issues that pertain to them because they are the ones that need to be listened to and as i said in a previous video you need to listen to them but you don't always, don't always have to agree with them but you have to listen to them but there are some points that are being made in this video that well, after i listened to it i was like you know what some of these points are not are not making sense and some of these points are are missing some very important facts that i think need to be covered so and now i'm gonna rant about again because you know fat man rants so without further ado let's go ahead and bring up the video and from msnbc and we're going to play Go through it bit by bit and respond to it and just see what they say and we will will respond as they go. Is there a pathway forward for you with Biden? Oh, absolutely not. You cannot keep killing people with our money and just keep thinking that, oh, we are stupid enough to elect you again because we'll fall in line. We'll f well, and here's one thing. Like, this is part of the thing where I'm initially I'm like, like, I, I understand where she's coming from because we're sending money or weapons to Israel and Israel is then using those, those, those weapons and everything to, to bomb Gaza. And I've stated my disagreements with Netanyahu and his actions as it pertains to how he's responded uh, to 10-7. And I think Netanyahu should be dragged in front of the Hague for what he's done. I think Netanyahu has, has gone too far with what he's done. Um, but here's a, here's a point that I would make uh, to this individual. And is that, is that because we provide Israel with those weapons, like the fact that, we, that that line is open, it gives us the communication line. It gives us the line of communication. It gives us the leverage to be able to try and push Israel to eventually stop. Whereas if we didn't have those, if we cut off the weapons, then Israel, Netanyahu specifically, would get more desperate and would probably be even worse. Now, I don't think this is in this video, but there was another video that I was watching. I couldn't find that particular clip with these individuals where I think they, they said something about, uh, are you afraid that it could be worse? And the person says, I can't imagine how worse it could be. You lack, um, under Trump, you lack imagination. If you can't imagine how Israel's response to Hamas could be worse with a Trump administration that would be sent there or sitting there applauding what Netanyahu's doing instead of actively working to try and stop it because Biden, the Biden administration is actively trying to work to stop it. Let's continue. Forget, how can you, how can, like this is an insult to me as a voter. For Very you, much. Biden has a pathway forward. Biden has a pathway forward. It's not and what saying, does that look like? That is him calling for a permanent and immediate ceasefire. The 
um, which uh, he's saying that he's hoping that a ceasefire happens Monday. There's a BBC article that says that he is hoping that a ceasefire gets done by Monday. And here's the thing, and maybe this is something that, again, I've talked about this on the show before. We're used to four years of an idiot in charge who does all of his diplomacy shouting from the rooftops. Everything is done out loud in public. Everybody gets to hear everything that we do diplomatically, unless it's going to hurt Trump personally. Biden does things differently. Biden does diplomatic things diplomatically, i.e. via back channels, i.e. he talks to people, you know, he, he has his, you know, the people that he's hired go be diplomatic behind the scenes and get things done and negotiate things to get things worked on. So that at the end of the day, he can get it finished. But he has also said that he's hoping that because of all that's work, work that's being done, that he's hoping that a ceasefire can get done by Monday. So we'll see by next week if a ceasefire gets done. So hopefully a ceasefire gets done by Monday and this guy will have a good change of heart. But, you know, I, I, don't, I don't understand some of what, what some of these people think Biden can do. Like, I don't, you can't just snap your fingers and force other people to do things. Like, there's... None of this would have happened had Hamas not attacked on 10-7. Just... Had Hamas not attacked on 10-7, there would have been none of this would have happened. None of this would have happened. It doesn't excuse what Netanyahu did. <coughs> not one bit. But none of it would have happened had Hamas not attacked on 10 7. But, so it's unreasonable to say that Israel should not have responded. It's reasonable to say that Israel should not be responding in the way that they're responding. But it's also unreasonable for people to say that there needs to be an immediate ceasefire without mentioning hostages. And that's the other thing that I went about with this, with this stuff. Where is this discussion about hostages? You can't say there needs to be an immediate ceasefire and then leave out the hostages. Like, you have to say there needs to be an immediate ceasefire with an immediate release of all hostages. If you say that, I'm in, I'm in complete agreement with you. I will completely agree with you. Immediate ceasefire upon release of all hostages. But if you don't release all the hostages, how are you going to get Israel to ceasefire? It's, there's no way to get Israel to do a ceasefire if you don't release all the hostages. It doesn't make any sense. Not one. Because why would, if, if, if you get Israel to, to do a ceasefire and Hamas still has the hostages, why would then Hamas release them? It doesn't make any sense. Straightforward, simple answer for the Biden administration is push for a ceasefire, stop aiding Israel in their war crimes, and I guarantee you there are enough people who. And there's a lot of aid that America gives to the Palestinian people, as well, or that's supposed to go to the Palestinian people, but Hamas takes it and uses it to build tunnels underneath and uses it to kill Israeli citizens as well. They're just not as good at it. But just because you're not as good as it doesn't mean you're not as deplorable. But again, where is this guy's talking about the hostages? You need to bring up the hostages in order to be taken seriously on this issue. If you're not bringing up the hostages, how are you supposed to be taken seriously? And this is a council person, I believe would be willing to deal with it and vote for the man. It is, in so many words, insane mm. to me to have the Democratic Party and the Biden administration sit here and essentially say, if Trump happens, it's your fault. Well, if Trump happens and people don't come out and vote against Trump, then it is the voters' fault for not voting against Trump. Because in the grand scheme of things, regardless of what I might agree or disagree with when it comes to Biden, Trump is existentially so much worse. 
And if you can't see that, there's a huge problem. West liberals need to stop saying deplorable, too many bad memories. No, it's fine. Deplorable. If you don't want a Trump presidency, then are you not worried about what he could do domestically yeah. to this country? I am. You know, it's like a vaccine. I'm willing to take short term pain for a long term gain. I'm willing to uh, uh, let go of Joe Biden and oppose Joe Biden, make him a one term president, punish Joe Biden by making him a one term president and pairing his loss with the genocide in Gaza. Why does our democracy? And here's, my, here's the main rant, all right? Here's the main rant. Because this guy is, at this point, I'm gonna say clueless. Short-term pain? Look, if this was Mitt Romney running against Joe Biden, if this was somebody like a John McCain, I mean, it can't be John McCain, but if it was somebody like a John McCain running against Joe Biden, if this was like a Liz Cheney running against Joe Biden, I might be able to see the argument that it might be short-term pain. I might not agree, I'm not gonna agree with it because there's still problems with the Republican Party in and of itself, regardless of that it's not Trump. But at least I could see an argument that he might be able to see that with a, a John McCain type person or a Mitt Romney type person or even a Liz Cheney type person, that four years of that type of Republican might be short term pain. I might be willing to see that even if I don't agree with it. I cannot see how anybody could view four more years of Donald Trump as anything close to short-term pain. Four more years of Trump is long-term pain. It, we're done. I mean, he's telling you he's gonna be a dictator on day one. A dictator on day one doesn't stop being a dictator on day two. We're done. There's no going back if Donald Trump gets back in office. We're flat out done. It's not short term pain. And who do you think he's coming for? It's not just the Mexicans, I'm telling you. He's the one that wanted to do a total and complete ban on Muslims entering the country. Total and complete. Did y'all forget that? How could y'all forget that? Total and complete ban of Muslims entering the country is what he campaigned on in 2016. That's magically just gotten out of your heads? Give me a freaking break. There's no short-term pain with Donald Trump and in office. It will be long-term pain. It's an existential threat, not just to us but to the planet. He will bend over backwards or forwards or whoever, however Putin wants him to. Ukraine will be toast. Ukraine will be completely annexed by Putin. NATO will be gone because Trump will pull out of NATO. Trump's already said he'll welcome Putin to go steamroll over non-dues paying NATO countries. He'll sit there and applaud as Netanyahu just completely flattens Gaza. You think thousands dead or bad? Try millions. I'm sure, Trump will be like, sure, I'll give I'll give Netanyahu everything you want. Flatten the whole place. Take it over. You have my blessings ridiculous again if you don't see how much worse it would be under net under how much Netanyahu would be under a Trump your imagination is lacking if you only think it's going to be short-term pain under a Trump then you're not paying attention I get it you don't like how Biden is handling it 
And, and I'm, fi I'm f fine. I get it. You don't like how Biden is handling. You, you wish he would have a, a stronger stance when it comes to Netanyahu publicly. I don't know how much, you know, he does things behind the scenes and you're not seeing the behind the scenes stuff. It's my opinion that if Joe Biden were to cut off all funding, were to cut off all aid to Israel, that Israel would be like, well, we're desperate now. We don't have an incoming flow of weapons, so we need to we need to flatten Gaza now while we have the ability to do so. And it would be done. And you would see much more death going on because you would see a panicked, cornered Netanyahu acting out, lashing out. That's my opinion. But knowing Netanyahu as I know, as I've known him through the years, as I've followed him through the years, as I've hated him through the years, that's what I think he would do. Which is why I think it's important that we have that leverage over him in aid. Because without that aid leverage, we have no ability to have a say or try and, to try and negotiate to try and force a negotiation at the table. And maybe they don't want to see it. It's fine. But what's not fine is is the fact that they that he thinks it's going to be short term pain. That's ridiculous and absurd. And anybody who thinks that we'll have short-term pain under Trump is ridiculous. Democracy, why is having a Trump presidency more important than those people's lives? Because more of those people are going to die if Trump is in office. Because more people are going to die overall if Trump is in office. How many people died in the United States of America because Trump was president during COVID? Trump cared more about the optics of testing. He wanted to stop testing because he didn't like how the numbers looked. He fought masking. He was, he didn't want to mask. He didn't want to set an example by masking because it wouldn't look good behind the resolute desk. He was a complete failure as president as for COVID. And because of his ineptitude as president and his inability to understand a little bit of science or to even trust his own experts when it came to science. And to set an example, hundreds of thousands of more people died because of him than needed to. Why is it more important why is Trump, it's not more important, but more people are going to die under a Trump presidency. You're going to see more Ukrainians die. You're going to see people, see more people in NATO die. Deaths will go up under Trump. Guarantee you. Not just the Palestinians, but all across the world. Because he owes his life I'm sure he owes money to Russian oligarchs and he will bend over forwards and backwards and again, any way that Putin wants him to because he's Putin's little bitch. Yeah. Mm. Why is our democracy more important than thousands of men, women, and children being killed? Because again, more than that is going to be killed if Trump gets into office. You're going to see people rounded up in this country, being deported, being shoved. And you already have his people, his, his, it's being reported that his experts want to round people up and shove um, migrants into concentration camps in this country. You already have him, you know, you, you know he wants to back Netanyahu, whatever he does, and he, he'll have, he'll fully support Netanyahu raising it up to 11. You know he's not going to interfere with Putin and, and Ukraine. You know he's not going to. You know he's not going to give Zelensky any any more weapons. You know he'll let Zelensky just fold, and Ukraine will be part of the Soviet Republic again. So yeah, I don't want to see any more Palestinians die. 
Not a single soul. I don't want to see any more Palestinians die. But I don't want to see any more Ukrainians die that have to. I don't want to see more any more Americans die that have to. I don't want to see any more immigrants die that have to. I don't want to see any any, any immigrants be shoved into concentration camps. I don't want to see NATO fall apart. I don't want to see the planet fall apart. And if Donald Trump gets into office, that's what's going to happen. And you can't see that because you have your blinders on. And that's the problem here. Is that you have a myopic view of the world. Is that you're so focused on the one problem, which is a problem. Don't get me wrong. What Netanyahu is, is doing in Gaza is absolutely a problem. He's gone too far. And I've criticized him before and I'll do it again. It's absolutely a problem what he's done in Gaza. Israel had every right to go after Hamas, but not like that. And Netanyahu should have stopped Hamas before the attacks because they knew about it before 10-7, as I predicted. And they didn't. Why? Because Netanyahu likely wanted to be able to use the attacks after 10-7 to his political benefit, which just makes him even more of a monster, which is another reason why he needs to be dragged in front of The Hague. But to have such a myopic view of the world and to only focus on the harm being done right now and not understand the increased harm that would be done by allowing Donald Trump to win is stupid, plain and simple. And that's the risk we face by not getting out there and voting and making sure that Donald Trump loses. Which sometimes means you have to vote for somebody that you don't agree with 100%. It sometimes even means you have to vote for somebody that you don't necessarily like. Because the alternative is an existential threat to the planet. Period.